Hi guys, and welcome to another episode. So, yeah, we're back here at Gunnar's Hold. Um, last episode we saw Tom, obviously. Tom's off on his big long adventure, headed to the other side of the world, the tarnished coast here, where the uh, Asura have decided to take up residence. They've been forced out from the underground because of the destroyers. We, however, we're not actually doing anything directly related to the destroyers at the moment. Um, when we got to the Eye of the North, we found out about a group of humans called the Eben Vanguard, who are assaulting the Char within their own homelands here. And uh, But a large group of them left, what was it, about a week or so before we got to the Eye of the North and um, they haven't come back so Gwen's really worried about them. Most importantly there's a Lieutenant, Lieutenant Langmar, quite an important character apparently, who's with them and that Lieutenant's missing as well so we desperately need to find them. And you know Peter's from Ascalon so it only makes sense for him to come here. So uh, I've got my party ready, uh, let's, let's go out shall we? No need to wait around there. So it's just Matt left a... Um, Gunnar's hold now. We will be seeing his story eventually, but obviously he's got business to do. Needs to speak to Gunnar himself. Let's grab ourselves Who a bounty. And uh, get moving. So yeah, um, you'll notice my build, I've actually changed it. I, I, I was just so sick of that old one we were using. I never really liked the Defy Pain build. It just so happened that that was what I needed to complete prophecies on my on, on solo. So... Uh, so yeah, this is the one we were using at the tournament, and you know, I, I quite like it. It's good for keeping everybody alive, it gives you some nice knockdowns and stuff, so why not? That's what I say. So yeah, Oak Hearts, we've already seen a lot of these. These will be up in the, the Shiver Peaks. We're seeing an excess of the Shiver Peaks at the moment, but once um, Peter here and Tom are both out of the Shiver Peaks, where we left off with Tom, you remember he was over in Olafstead? He's not actually far from getting out of the Shiver Peaks at all, and uh, the walk out of the Shiver Peaks for Peter isn't too far at all, as you can see. We're going to Long Eyes Ledge here. Why are we going to Long Eyes? Um... I'm not sure why we're going there, but our objective is to go to Long Eyes Ledge and search for clues about the Vanguard. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, we'll actually find someone we can... Oh, I love that view back into Garner's Hold. I never knew this was here. Okay, yeah. Um, it's actually quite cool here at the Norhart Domains, because like I said in the last episode, there's kind of three paths you choose depending on which, uh, which arc of the story you want to do first. And what's nice about it is that it feels like quite a different explorable area depending where you go. Like down here, you've got the cave that we saw and all the Mandragore. There's loads of elementals everywhere you go, apparently, but um, up here we'll be seeing a lot of uh, uh, centaurs, as far as I remember. And up in the other direction, I think you see uh, some other stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah. Hopefully we won't take too much damage. No, we seem okay. Okay, so we've got a pile of elemental dust here. One nice thing they did in Eye of the North, if you noticed how through sort of all the games, they always uh, enemies always drop like random loot like that but you rarely care about it because you rarely want to go to collectors collectors in Eye of the North a lot of them can give you like really really unique armors which was something you haven't really seen anywhere else you could get armors from collectors no doubt but you can get unique ones uh, so what you actually but they cost a lot of points so like I just picked up a pile of elemental dust I believe that's a collectible that eventually you can get some unique armor from which is nice because it kind of encourages players to pick up the loot as they go through the, all of the game um, and it happens with several things. I'll try and point them out as I can. I'm not too good with all that stuff though. I must admit. We'll see what happens though. But yeah, I will try and collect it and hopefully show you all, you guys all that stuff. Of course it is an expansion but that doesn't mean it doesn't have new armors. It's not just collectible armors you get either. There's lots of uh, cool stuff to do with the armors, to do with the factions, which again I'll, I'll, I'll be trying to show you guys. So looking forward to that. Yeah, just a lot more pine souls here. There was something else I was going to say but I've completely forgotten it. Well, that's them down. We got a shrine here. You'll notice actually the guy at the shrine uh, outside Garnars didn't want to fight me. If I en ever end up sort of talking to NPCs over again, because we've already seen it on a different character, don't worry, I will cut it. But as far as I'm aware, for quite a while that won't happen. But just so you know. Are you hunting? Okay, hello, something? Ivan Slarsorin. Impress me in battle, then we talk. Oh, by the way, I am aware that uh, a lot of, you know, like a lot, a lot of the areas around here, we're in the, these were the Varijar Fells. I was calling them Varijar Fells, but I, isn't it the Varijar Fells? Isn't that how it works? Um, because they, they're kind of like Spanish. They don't pronounce J's like that. They pronounce it with like a Y sound. I don't know. I did hear that. I know a place we'll be going to in a minute isn't pronounced the way you speak it. And I've, I've been very aware of it because the whole way through this Let's Play I've been saying things wrong. But this is like the one point where I'm like, haha, I do know the correct pronunciation and I will give it. But yeah, okay, so we're coming up these rocky areas. 
Nothing that. In okay, here we go. Yeah, here's the mod near. Oh, I thought he was alone, and then a load more just charged over the hill. That was pretty awesome. Of course, I probably should have known better. They're never alone, are they? Let's be honest here. Yeah. Uh, am I going that way? No, I'm going this way. Yeah, across this bridge over here. I feel like I've aggroed something behind me. Have I? No, I'm good. Oh, another guy. I, I don't really need to fight these people because they don't have unique information for me after I've collected the first bounty. But uh, let's go across here. Is there a sign? I thought there was a sign here. Obviously not. Let's go. But the, oh yeah, here we go. So this is the Biora marches. I always, for like years after I the North came out, used to say this to myself. Biora marches. But I'm pretty sure it's Biora marches. Uh, so yeah. Oh, mandragores. Really? Really? Oh, I think we get another cave to go through though. That'll be nice. Oh, there's actually something quite cool I want to show you here as well. Another example of a little thing that they've done here. I'll let my guys fight those. I can't be bothered. Let's go over here. Hello, Skardor the Swift. Yeah, this is why Mandragores are annoying. They just cripple you and stuff. Never anger annoying. Oh, God. This is going to be like a 1v1, isn't it? Let's do it. I'm ready for you. Oh, can't do anything. Knocking you down. Knocking you down. Oh, there we go. They all killed him. Right. So, what do you have to say? Why are you here? He says Sven took over the hunting party and kicked us all out. I won't stand for it. I'll show up at the mead hall with a thousand dead creatures to show for my day's work. Care to help with a little good-natured vengeance, human? Yeah, let's do it. Sounds like a personal problem. Yes, it's a personal problem, but we can help him with it. I don't mind helping people with personal problems. Ah, fucking traps. It's okay. Yeah, there's another cave. Check it out. This this is Gerstig's cavern. I feel like it's probably a reference to something, but I, I I don't have a clue. All right. Well, let's go in. Again, this is quite a big place, as you can tell. There's actually a dungeon to the north. Still not sure what I'm going to do with the dungeons there, guys. I will keep you posted. I'm not sure whether we're going to be able to play them together or not. I'd really like to. Uh, there's a lot. I don't know whether I'll sort of integrate it through the Let's Play or do sort of a dungeon series afterwards. It, it all depends on how things pan up. But let me know what if you guys have any ideas or any insights or anything like that. Just uh, feel free to, to mention it. I'm all ears. Right, so another cave full of wolves, but this time they're actual wolves, not um, Kvedolfs. Not sure if there's a boss here. The sign didn't have a warning. I'm not sure if there's any quests here either, actually. I don't remember any quests being here. Could be wrong. It's quite a big one, actually. Can we go over there? Hmm, no. Let's just keep going. Oh, that was pretty awesome. Did you see them howling just there? It went, ooh. Hmm, where are we going? It's quite a big cave. Let's just keep going straight through. See, I, I don't know why, but I feel a bit antsy about coming in here because I feel, oh, okay. Lisa, the pack leader. There is a boss. Uh, yeah, but I'm not sure whether this is just a dead end or something. Wow, look at that wolf. He's a, uh, he looks like, um,. What do you call it? One of the... Uh, do you remember when we were in Glint's Lair and you had all the Crystal Guardians? By the way, speaking of Glint's Lair, uh, you know all those facets that we fought? Those random, like, dragon bosses? The facets? They actually... They're not just a passing thing. If you can remember those, they actually become... They, they, they come back into the story here at Eye of the North. They, these are, like, the kinds of things... There we go, Lisa's dead. These are the kinds of things which will be coming back and, exp and they'll be greater explored in Eye of the North. Sort of... There's a lot of things like that that just seem to have been passing things in, in prophecies and they come back and get a lot more uh, exposure in, in Eye of the North which is great and uh, that that will be happening at the Tarnished Coast so, so do remember that because it will be coming up I'm, I guess this is the way out if there is even a way out it would be, so, <laughs> be such a middle finger to us if there was no way out it was just a dead end no there we go I just saw a sign over there
Ah, fresh air. Cool. Right, so where are we? Uh, not that far, to be honest. I thought we'd be further. Right, Long Eyes Ledge is just south. But, sorry, well, east more than south. But, if we go north... No, I don't remember the specifics of where it is. If I can't find it, then I'll cut it till I do. Uh, oh, God, what was that? Oh, we've been fought by bisons. So, yeah, bisons. Kind of like the minotaurs, I guess. Um... Just more beasts of the mountain. I like this though, because there's a lot of actual wildlife here. It's not like in, in factions, where there's no wildlife at all. Everything hostile is literally a, a directly because of Shiro, except for maybe the gangs. Everything is because of Shiro. At least here it just feels like a natural world. I like that about prophecies too. Most of the things you're fighting are just, you know, it's just hostile wildlife. Imps, oak hearts, the odd ghosts. I don't know whether they really count as wildlife, but... Anyway, um, there's a big place over there, a char camp if I remember correctly, uh, but it never used to be a char camp, we'll learn more about that in the main story. Uh, you can see some gates actually, which we won't be able to break through for a long time, but, oh, where are they? I love the Bureau Marches. You can actually get through this whole place without fighting a single enemy. You can go from Long Eyes to a place up here without... <laughs> any fight, and if you guys play the game or do any farming, you'll probably know what I'm talking about there. But yeah. I think I'm going to have to look at a map, guys. One sec. Alright, it's not too far. Um, I was very close to it, actually. It's up here. All this effort, and it's not even really that good. <laughs> So yeah, here are the gates in which we can't get through, but eventually we will be able to actually smash those. It's pretty cool. Okay, so here we are. I think this is it. Uh, you can see a load of Stone Summit. So we, we are actually already aware that Stone Summit are about up here. Obviously, they love the mountains. They are dwarves. Um, but we haven't really met many up north. But here's our first group that we meet, and they're just stood here. Lord Glacius the Eternal, from the darkest depths of the underworld, we call upon you. And they're doing something. You know, I would have thought him to be like. Okay, so he's summoned, and he says, "Wee!" You know, I would have thought him to be larger, and he's an imp. And the other guy says, "Look here, the summoning scroll. Beneath his picture, it proclaims actual size." Sigh. So, well, we must make use of what we have. Attack. Oh God, are they actually going to come for me? No. Okay, so that there is a little bit of hidden dialogue. Pretty cool. I never knew about it until I was doing a little bit of research before these episodes. Uh, and it's actually a quote from uh, Buffy the Vampire. Wow, I just took so much damage. I mean, I'm awed. There we go, look at all that panic going off. Yeah, it's actually from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The, uh, the quote um, where he says... Oh, uh, look under the print, it says actual size. That's a direct quote from Giles, uh, which was pretty cool for me to hear. I haven't seen that show for ages. I used to watch that all the time as a kid. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, they're dead. Uh, if you actually kill them before they finish the summon summoning, you that, that boss actually won't appear. Glacius won't appear. Um, I guess we could go super hardcore law nerd on this and talk about how they've summoned an imp from the underworld and the implications of that. But, uh, you know, I just think it's a cool little thing that, that's out there. Anyway, right, that's my little distraction. I don't think that there's any other point. We will be coming back here, but it gets complicated. I don't think they'll be there when we come back as Matt. So I wanted to show you guys that now. Um, I will speed it up until we get to Long Eyes because I don't think there's anyone else to fight now. You'll notice the terrain's slightly different here. Yes, and we're going downhill. Gonna get out of the Shiver Peaks. Very cool. So you can see over there in the distance a gate. It was actually closed when I was looking at it from a distance, but I guess it must have just been the LOD that made it look like that. Oh no, they're fighting. Yeah, we'll be okay. Oh no, not another patrol. Oh, screw it. I can't be bothered to fight you. The one thing I liked about my Prophecies Let's Play was that I never had to get slowed down or stopped by like all the millions of patrols. I could literally just run past. Can you imagine how long that Let's Play would have been if I wasn't doing that? I know it slowed down at certain points because I was doing it solo, like, uh, I don't know, Thunderhead Keep. But uh, I, th I think on the whole it made it a lot faster. In fact, that was one of my main reasons for doing it solo in the first place. Anyway, right, so Sawn the Merry... He's not going to have dialogue for us. I don't know Are you hunting this. something? I guess I just like fighting Norn. 
Not because they're bad, don't get me wrong. I quite like the Norn. Anyway, there we go. Who goes there? We got 20 rep points, I guess, for doing that. Right, okay, so this is Long Eyes Ledge. This is sort of the, uh, I guess, the furthest down the mountain outpost you ever see a Norn sort of live in, I guess. In Guild Wars 2, obviously, the Norn, you actually get Black Norn, where they live in, in Lion's Arch, and they catch the sun for so long, which is awesome. I love the idea of that. Anyway, right, so this is Long Eyes Ledge, and yes, yeah, suddenly very, very less um, snowy and mountainous. We're here, we're getting our first peaks of the Char homelands, which was very exciting for a lot of people because, you know, the Char were the original antagonists in the Guild Wars campaigns and learning more about them until Eye of the North came out, we knew, you should understand, there's pretty much nothing about the Char. So this was pretty amazing to be able to look out at their homelands and more importantly, I'll talk about it more later, but that their homelands look just like pre-searing Ascalon, really. They're just beautiful and scenic like that. Um... And look at what the Char did to, to our lands. Don't forget the Char originally lived here in Ascalon. And look at what they did to it with the uh, the searing. Anyway, I'll talk more about that later. But before we go there, our quest actually uh, guides us to speak to the Norn here. This is right... This is really just a very uh, nice passage through the, the Far Shiver Peaks into their homeland. So uh, we're going to ask the Norn and see whether he's seen anything suspect. Here he is. So here's Ulfun Longai. So Longai's Ledge. Again, an outpost named after a Norn. Have you seen anything, old fun? Are you hunting something? What's that? The Ibn Vanguard? That ragtag bunch of humans passed through here not too long ago, muttering something about fighting Char. I've got no problem with that, just so long as they don't do it here. Okay, that sounds fair. I heard some fighting downhill a few nights ago, southeast of here. From what I heard, it was a large battle. Keep your eyes open. It's likely you'll find some gear and weapons you can scavenge. If you find a nice axe, let me know. Hmm, thank you for the information. We'll focus our search on the southeast and keep our eyes open. I think we'll make a camp here for a while. You have a nice view. He does have a nice view. He really does. I kind of wish it was a little bit steeper, though. I mean, you get these sheer cliffs, right? Look at that cliff. If the outpost was, like, looking over a, a look like that, it would be, be much more interesting. But really, it's kind of a very weak gradient. But you see that a lot in games, really, don't you? So, uh, before we leave, um, let's read the outpost description. I guess there's not really much to do here. Uh, not at the moment. In fact, rarely there's a lot to do here. There, there is some cool stuff later, but uh, I'll talk about that. In fact, related to one of the first ever videos I ever did. Yeah, right, okay, so Long Eyes Ledge. This steep, sloping hillside overlooking green char lands is the home of Olfun Long Eye. The ledge overlooks a passage for both char and human raiding parties alike, and many travellers use this hearthstead as a stopping point during long journeys. Ulfun has made it clear to all, any fighting on his land will not be tolerated, and shall be punished severely. Yeah, I kind of got that vibe from him. Right, so it doesn't sound good about the, the vanguard, he heard a big battle, right? Anything around here? No. Uh, let's just hope everything's okay. I love the char homelands though, they look awesome. <laughs> 